Welcome back. There has been an uptick in COVID-19 cases on New Providence and Grand Bahama and additional COVID death as well. The Ministry of Health and Wellness reported on Sunday. The ministry said 36 cases were reported in the last six weeks with 26 cases in December alone. Grand Bahama has recorded 11 new cases in the past two weeks. A male has also reportedly died from COVID-19 on Grand Bahama. In New Providence, two people are hospitalized after testing positive for the virus. None of the cases require intensive care management. The Ministry of Health is urging residents to practice good hygiene and contact a physician if you begin to experience COVID symptoms. Last week, Prime Minister Philip Davis was reported as saying that the full implementation of the Freedom of Information Act is not a top priority for his administration, as the focus right now is on reducing the cost of living, reducing crime, and the cost of energy. That statement did not sit well with many. However, despite this, Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Fred Mitchell seemingly adding fuel to the fire when he said in an interview with ZNS that the Davis administration is not interested in the Freedom of Information Act. We uh, oppose this Freedom of Information Act. The FNM uh, has this view. Uh, they've passed something called Fiscal Responsibility Act, the Procurement Act, Freedom of Information Act. All of these things really have nothing to do with people's ordinary lives. Freedom of Information, I don't think so. It's uh, bureaucratic, expensive to execute. You're talking about a philosophical difference here between us and them. Well, shortly after that statement made its rounds on social media and began to generate negative publicity, the office of the Prime Minister released a statement clarifying the government's position when it comes to the Freedom of Information Act. The statement released on Friday, January 5th said, the office of the Prime Minister wishes to make clear the Davis administration's commitment to the implementation of the Freedom of Information Act. The statement said Minister Mitchell, in a recent Nassau Guardian article, affirmed that the government is actively moving moving forward with the act's implementation. It said, this step underscores the government's unwavering dedication to ensuring transparency and accountability in governance and the public right to information. Meanwhile, the official opposition and its leader, Michael Pintard, have also been critical of the Davis administration's apparent lagging with the implementation process for the Freedom of Information Act. Mr. Pintar said last week that it is in the view of the opposition that the Freedom of Information Act pilot program can be launched at this time as the unit has an office, a full-time commissioner, and is fully staffed. After the statement by Mr. Mitchell, followed by the statement from the office of the Prime Minister, Mr. Pintar on Saturday accused the government of engaging in damage control. It is an old adage that often when a crime is bad, the cover-up is even worse. This came to mind when I read the statement from the office of the prime minister, from the desk of the country's chief executive, on Fred Mitchell's incredibly sad statement on the government views on the freedom of information. The army of political spin doctors at the OPM decided for reasons unknown to issue an utterly false and misleading statement in their futile attempt to backpedal or moonwalk away from the sentiments expressed by cabinet minister and chairman. Mitchell. Of course, as we all know, Minister Mitchell let the cat out of the bag and confessed to the nation that the PLP simply ain't about that freedom of information business. According to Mr. Pintard, the statement uh, apparently made by Mr. Mitchell in The Guardian is misleading. The Prime Minister's statement said that Mitchell's quote end quote affirmed that the government supports the Freedom of Information Act. But this is what Mitchell himself actually said, and I quote, we oppose this Freedom of Information Act, end quote. He went on to add that the PLP think that other pieces of legislation like the Fiscal Responsibility Act and the Public Procurement Act are unnecessary and are not meaningful to Bahamians. So the clear and unmistakable truth is that Mr. Mitchell didn't affirm the Freedom of Information Act. The truth is stated that he and the PLP opposes these acts. This wholesale rejection is the opposite of affirmation. Mr. Pintard criticized the government for insulting the intelligence of the Bahamian people with that statement from the office of the Prime Minister. He said citizens have long realized that the Davis administration has never had any intention of fully implementing the Freedom of Information Act because they do not want transparency and accountability. 
And finally, the Bahamas has been named as one of the most affordable tax-free countries to live in in 2024. A recent research study has ranked the Bahamas as the eighth most affordable tax-free country for expatriates, with the average travel and housing costs contributing to its standing on the list. The Bahamas is the only country in the top nine located in the Western Hemisphere, coming in with a relocation score of 4.16 out of 10. The research highlights the Bahamas as not only a affordable vacation destination, but also a haven for returning visitors and expatriates, echoing Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper's sentiments in his recent overview of the Ministry of Tourism. And that'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Doreen Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.